This is food chemistry unit two. We're still in chapter six, applications of pH. Digestion. It begins in the mouth. You have saliva that breaks down food with a pH of 6.5, so slightly acidic. Food travels down the esophagus to the stomach. Uh, you have HCl or hydrochloric acid in your stomach um, that is needed to digest proteins. So your stomach has a pH of 1.5 to 1.7, so quite acidic. The mucus lining on the stomach walls allows this process to happen without the acid leaking out to the rest of the body. Now also in the stomach you have pepsin, which is an enzyme that starts to break down proteins into smaller pieces. You have gastric lipase, which is an enzyme that starts to break down fat. And then you have pancreatic juice, which raises the pH to 7.0 by the time the food leaves the stomach. When it leaves the stomach, your food enters the small intestine, and this is also aided by the gallbladder. The gallbladder secretes this greenish liquid called bile that has a pH of 8.4, which is in the basic range. Bile is an emulsifier. It helps water to mix with fat. It's made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder, and then it enters your um, small intestines. After food is properly digested, nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream. Blood has a pH of 7.4 that's roughly neutral. Now, in terms of what's called um, a stomach upset, there is no food that you eat that can become more acidic than your stomach. A feeling of excess stomach acid might be a stomach that is too full or needs to stretch. Now, sometimes people get what's called heartburn. Your esophagus opens more and acid might splash back up, causing that burning feeling known as heartburn. And then we have something called ulcers. Um, these might be the result of bile salts in the stomach um, coming from the opening of the small intestine. If they splash back into the stomach, this upsets the stomach and the lining is weakened. This causes the HCl or hydrochloric acid um, to eat into the lining and wall. So I just wanted to show you here, um, this, this is the digestive system. We're not going to talk about all of this, but here's the mouth. So here's the saliva. It's got en amylase. It's an enzyme to help break down your starch. Uh, and then we talked about the esophagus. This is your food tube. And then here's the stomach. Um, you have the liver and underneath it is the gallbladder that secretes that bile. Um, here's the pancreas that has that pancreatic juice. So this all helps to um, break down the contents in the stomach. And then it enters the small intestine. And then your nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream. All right, some more applications of pH. Food preservation. Um, food spoilage, this means that microorganisms are growing in and feeding on food, and many foodborne illnesses are caused by bacteria growing in food. So one of the most dangerous ones is Clostridium botulinum. That's the name of the bacteria. Um, it's a bacteria that produces a toxin called botulism, or I'm sorry, a toxin causing botulism. Um, this is the deadliest type of foodborne illness. It produces the toxin in a pH greater than 4.6. So these are your low acid foods. Any food less than 4.6 that's more acidic, right, will not support the growth of this bacteria. All right, and actually here it is. Um, corn, green beans, and other vegetables that need to be canned, right, these should be canned at high temperatures and with pressure. So 100 degrees Celsius, that's the boiling point of water. This is not enough to kill this bacteria, so it needs a higher temperature than this. Um, and pressure canning would actually raise that temperature. So here it is. This is the bacteria. Um, and it's often found um, in bashed foods, right? If a can is bashed, never buy that because this bacteria could get in. The pickling process. Um, low acid foods can be preserved by this. Um, it involves soaking or heating in acetic acid, which is vinegar. It lowers the pH less than 4.6, so harmful bacteria like we just saw uh, cannot grow. So common foods that are pickled are cucumbers, beets, cabbage, which makes sauerkraut or also kimchi, um, and watermelon rinds. Buttermilk and yogurt, um, these foods have a low pH and can, can stay fresh for a while if stored properly. 
Yeasts can grow in a pH of 4 to pH 7 range. It's used for th different things like for wine and bread baking. That's why there's such a variety in the pH. Moles can grow in a pH of 2 to a pH of 8.5 range. Um, molds are part of the processing of tea, coffee, chocolate, cheese, and shelf-stable juices. We'll talk about cheese a little bit later, but here's an example of a cheese that would involve a mold, right? That's blue cheese. Salts. So right now we've talked a lot about acids and bases. Salts. These are byproducts of neutralization. And what that means is if you add an acid and a base together, it'll produce salt and water. And salt helps preserve foods. It can kill bacteria through dehydration. And it's one of the earliest forms of preservation. Why? It was abundant, inexpensive, and does not need refrigeration. All right, in baking, we have chemical leavening agents. Uh, these are added to baked goods to lighten or aerate the finished product. Baking powder. This is a combination of baking soda, dry acids, and a filler like cornstarch. So you can see right here, Clabber Girl is, I believe, the original baking powder. Um, and it's still on the shelves today, pretty common. The acids react with moisture and heat. So this is what we call double acting. Baking soda, right, this, you see this, this Arm & Hammer baking soda, pretty common, it's in my lab. Um, these contain a base, and when added to an acid like lemon juice, vinegar, sour cream, um, buttermilk, cream of tartar, and are moistened in the batter, it is neutralized to make salt and water along with CO2 gas. So you can see how this baking powder is double acting because it's got the acid, right, which has its own reaction, and the base, which has a different reaction. But the baking soda itself, um, it's really to make that CO2 gas. CO2 creates air pockets and a light, porous structure during baking, like fluffiness. Cream of tartar, right here. Um, the chemical name is potassium bitartrate, which is probably where the tartar gets its name. This is a moisture activated dry acid in baking powder, right? Um, it helps release CO2 and batter before baking, again, for fluffiness. All right, now take a look at these two types of cakes because they're on um, different ends of that um, pH range, right? Look at angel food cake. Um, this is the most acidic type of cake. Um, it's baked with egg whites. Um, these form a more stable foam when acidic. So adding lemon juice or cream of tartar increases the acidity, and it's usually a snowy white color. Devil's food cake is more basic. Baking soda is used as the leavening agent along with milk or water, and it promotes a deep brown color. Eggs used in cooking. Um, CO2 is dissolved in eggs. It escapes through porous shells and the pH then rises. CO2 is acidic and if it leaves the egg, the egg is now more basic. Your fresh eggs have a lower pH compared to ones that have been, that have been on the shelf for a while. The longer the egg sits, the more the CO2 escapes and the egg is more basic. So fresh eggs can have a pH as low as 5.6. Egg whites are thicker and will trap more air when beaten. Fresh eggs are preferred for things like angel food cakes and meringues. Um, pH has little effect on the yolk. Hard boiled eggs will peel easier if the egg is older. Fresh eggs tear easier. A little bit of egg knowledge for you. Um, let's look at fruits. Maturity of fruits. Um, acids develop as fruits mature. Acids aid in the production of flavor compounds. Acids improve juice quality, color development, and they increase the sugar content. The pH level of grapes is crucial for successful wine making. Citrus fruits once picked, um, the ripening process stops. So there needs to be a balance between the sweetness of the sugars with the sourness of the acids. It depends on the type of citrus fruit and the month and location of the harvest. So here's some grapes and here's your citrus fruits.